What's up everybody? Jordan Yost here, owner and driver of the Yost Auto Sport Endurance Racing M4. What we're going to be doing today is something a little bit different. We are going to be doing an install video of CSF's dual pass top mount charge cooler for the F80 platform. First thing we're going to do is take a look at a couple of differences between what the stock charge cooler looks like and what CSF's looks like and compare the two. Over here on the table what I have is the stock charge air cooler out of the F80 platform. It's aluminum center with two plastic end tanks. What CSF has done is something a little bit different. They have cast aluminum end tanks and a dual pass core that is 60% larger than the stock, which is obviously going to provide much more cooling capacity uh, and provide more reliable power. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you guys over to the car. We're gonna show you exactly how to put one of these in. It's very simple, very easy. You only need a couple of tools, a little bit of time, and you guys are on the road. Now that we're up here in the engine bay, what we're gonna do is take you guys through step-by-step step of what it takes to change out the top mount air charge cooler. Now, this is already a CSF cooler. We're going to be removing this one and putting in our brand new one of one, $100 bill coated uh, top mount charge cooler. Uh, but as far as fitment goes, there is absolutely no difference in how this one fits versus a stock one. They are direct drop in, everything is plug and play, very, very simple. So we're gonna take you through the removal of the charge pipes. We have some fluid lines up front that we're gonna to have to remove. If you guys are running coolant or water wetter, you might wanna save it or you might wanna have a bucket around just to make sure that you capture some of that fluid, it doesn't go everywhere. We have another charge pipe on the back side. Here at the cooler, we have an electrical connection and we have the reservoir. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through step by step how to do all this. And uh, at the end, we're gonna fire it up. So first step you guys are gonna do is you're gonna remove the charge pipes. You're gonna loosen up your hose clamps or whatever type of clamps you guys have on your charge pipes. Go ahead and loosen up both sides. That way you can actually pull the charge pipes back and, uh, and get them loose from the actual cooler itself. And that way when you guys go to remove it, it'll pop out just fine. Next step, what we're gonna do is we are gonna remove the fluid lines. We're gonna try to capture as much of the fluid as possible. They like said, we run water wetter in our, our cooling system. We'll wiggle this loose. And again, try to capture as much as we can. Not gonna leak too much out of this side because this side goes to the um, actual uh, cooler itself in the radiator box. Um, there is fluid in this currently. As we start to pull it out, we will leak some, but that's the first connection you wanna make. We'll undo this second connection here in a minute once we get the rest of the charge pipe and electrical connection undone. So next step is we are gonna remove the charge pipe on the back side of the cooler here. This is the one that actually feeds the engine. So this is the cold air side of the cooler. So we're gonna loosen this up. These typically have to be pretty loose for them to come off. And then we also have the electrical connection right here behind it, which we're going to want to undo. And that clears that. And once we go to actually pull this cooler out, it'll relieve all the tension off of the charge pipe there. So what we're going to do next, we have the charge pipes disconnected. We have the inlet line, uh, which that's what this is. This is actually pumping fluid into the cooler. We have the reservoir cap off. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn on the pump uh, electronically and pump the fluid out of the charge cooler here itself um, in order to get as much fluid out as possible so that we don't get it all over the engine when we disconnect the lines. Uh, it's slowing down quite a bit. That was good. It had a pretty good burst. So what we're doing right now is we're actually pumping out the fluid. We've activated the pump. And you can hear it running. And it's the electric pump that's down below that uh, is actually pumping that water out. So we should have a pretty clean system at this point. So next what we're going to do is we're going to remove the remaining two fluid lines on the car. So we're probably gonna make a little bit of a mess here, but that just comes with the territory here. So we're gonna get these up. 
You get these off, and then the cooler should be free. And there we go. So now the whole cooler should be able to come up off the car and then we will remove the reservoir se uh, separately. All right, at this point, everything should be disconnected uh, and ready to, to pull out. This thing sits down in some rubber bushing, so you gotta pull up on it pretty good. Get it loose from the charge pipe and make sure you're clear of all of your electrical connections. It should come right out. So now that we have the cooler out, we're simply going to transfer over the reservoir and the sensor. Uh, CSF has been nice enough to provide all the hardware for you. So again, it's just gonna be plug and play. The only thing that you're gonna have to do is compress this fitting here to pull it off the end there and then transfer it over, do the same. So once you're done taking off the sensor and everything you need to off the top, uh, you're going to flip it over and remove the brackets. These are what actually snap this into the car. These little rubber bushings are what holds it down. So you just remove all the bolts. It has a clamp for your hose. You're going to take all this stuff and just transfer it over to the CSF cooler. All right, so now that we got everything back together, what we're doing, we're ready for install. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this thing back in. We're just gonna repeat the process. We're gonna put all the charge pipes back on, put all the coolant lines back on, the electrical, and then we're gonna fire it up. Alright guys, we're all finished up. As you can see, the, uh, the cooler's in place now. We got charge pipes hooked back up. All of our coolant lines, our electrical, reservoir, everything's been checked and double checked just to make sure that it's tight and it's ready to go. What's really important about this system is that you purge it and just like how we uh, eliminated the remaining fluid that was in the line, we have to activate the pump again and what that'll do is it'll flush the whole system and activating the pump will work out any air bubbles in this system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the driver compartment here. You're going to put it on an auxiliary mode and you're going to push and hold the gas pedal for about 15 seconds. And what that does is it activates the electric pump uh, that will actually start to force fluid through that cooler. And what that will allow us to do is just top off the system, make sure it's good to go. Right there, it activated. You can hear it running. So what we're gonna do, open up our reservoir. Start putting in fluid. So right now that pump is working fluid through the system, through the cooler up front, the heat exchanger, and through the cooler itself, and it's going to purge out all the air. Nice little feature just to make sure that you get all the bubbles out.
All right, guys, all finished up here. Uh, just got done purging the system and uh, just getting ready to fire it up. Make sure everything's good to go. Make sure you guys contact CSF directly. Get your custom cooler. Uh, it's hot as hell out here. We're in Vegas, so we're uh, we're ready to be done for the day. So again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Stay tuned for more.